Gareth, you came in <laughs> and the first thing you did say was, I've told you all along, it will not happen. Mm. It's now not going to happen, as far as we know. And of course, I'm talking about Fury, you say. Is it ever going to happen? Yeah, I think it might happen at the end of this year if the chess game plays out um, as I expect it to. And I expect uh, Fury and Usyk to potentially fight in Saudi Arabia for a lot more money than both men would have earned uh, in a few weeks' time at Wembley Stadium on April the 29th. Um, I was sceptical the whole way along because of the protracted negotiations, because it was due to take place in February, if you recall. Then it moved to Saudi Arabia in, or, or at least the Middle East uh, for April the 29th, then back to London for the 29th with a double booking uh, by George Warren booking both um, the Middle East venue and, and, and Wembley Stadium. And as the days and the weeks ticked by, my scepticism only grew. And when the 70-30 split was agreed, my scepticism grew even more because look at the money and Simon's a, a, a fantastic mind on, on money in sports as we hear every day with you um, breaking things down like he was just talking about the billion dollars in a billion pounds rather in, in, mm. in the football in this country that it's a gift as you say well in heavyweight boxing when we get to this level money is the gift and both these men are looking at end games in their career yes they're looking at legacy and undisputed titles and all those things yeah. but at the end of the day it's a power broken strong arming game of chess at this level with huge money on the table and I think when you looked at the sums Alexander Usyk was arguably going to earn two thirds or even a third of what he might have earned against Anthony Joshua in his last outing when the monies were in and his tax was paid and his manager and his promoter were paid so I think he was lightly moving himself out as well which is why he wanted the rematch clause and yet, which he wanted in Saudi and Tyson Fury as well might have been looking at it going I'm not sure I do want this right now. I've got a Netflix series coming out in July that 500 million people will watch. I, I'm being cynical here and a promoter, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, and maybe I can fight Anthony Joshua in the summer. Eddie Hearn wasn't slow in coming forwards last night saying, George Warren and I have taught material terms already for Joshua and, uh, and, and Fury. So maybe that fight could happen in the summer. Well, and maybe thing... Usyk will fight, in my view, we can go into this. Usyk, uh, this is what I'm going to predict now that Alexander Usyk will fight Deontay Wilder next in the Middle East in a couple of months' time, maybe June, July, August. Um, and then they'll look to try and make Fury and Usyk in the Middle East late in the year. And in the meantime, Fury... There'll be talk about him fighting Garnu, Francis Ngannou, the, the MMA heavyweight champion, formerly of the UFC. Um, or, and it's still a huge money fight and the big money fight here, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury at Wembley sometime this summer. The, the thing was, when Krasiuk, um, <coughs> Usyk's manager, came on yesterday, at the same time as Frank Warren yeah, was, was on fantastic. there, yeah. we still thought, I mean, listen to them, Gareth, we still thought there's legs in this yet, they're going to get there. I still believe this fight can be made, and I believe with, with the will of everybody concerned, we can get it over the line, and that's what I'm trying to do. So, so Frank Alex still says, no, uh, uh, there's distance in this yet. The fight can still happen. You told me earlier on this morning that it's off. Do you stick by that? Only God, the Lord, can give the 100% guarantee. But from the perspective uh, of we are having now, this fight uh, is not going to happen on the 29th. Maybe some miracle could would happen but uh, at this point I'm, I'm 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 really sincere i'm not like trying to play games as soon as we finish with you guys we're going to get back on the phone together at my good friend alex and i and we're going to have a chat and mm. if we can do this we're going to come back on to you and tell you we've done a deal so is that off point frank i mean the fight is five weeks away uh five, well that's it i think you know we i think we've probably got about a day maybe two days and that'd be about it and then we're done do you think alex Usyk will still be in if you tell him now that there's still there's still a chance, will he still be in? My name is Alexander, but not Usyk. My <laughs> name is Alexander Krasik. That's why I can, I can speak only on my behalf. So, I mean, Simon, there was a bit of polite laughter at the end of it all. But at the end of the day, the finger's got to be pointed. So who is the real greedy belly in these fight negotiations, Fury or Usyk? Um, depends what you think greed is. I mean... <laughs> These guys go into a ring to get paid to do a sport that ultimately puts them in mortal jeopardy. They get an opportunity to make significant money. The big polluting situation is the Middle East and money. It's corrupted the thinking of everybody because everybody thinks that anything other than Middle East and money is getting underpaid. 
So when you've got these big fights that come along and the Middle Easterns can't host them at this time, whether it's because of Ramadan or Eid or whatever it is because the stadium hasn't been built, you've got this lure of this £100 million facility fee, which you ain't going to get anywhere else. So all of a sudden, everything underneath that isn't sufficient because they've already had their minds corrupted. And I think it was always a jeopardy. But I did believe Frank, and I do believe that Frank Warren did everything he possibly could, but I don't think he has control over Tyson Fury. And I don't think anyone probably would get told up control over Tyson Fury because I think he wakes up one morning thinking he's Arthur and wakes up the next morning thinking he's Martha. So you can't control somebody when that sort of thing's going on. Um, and I think ultimately it's disappointing because, you know, the noise that gets made about boxing, and it's all a lot of it's hyperbole and a lot of it's hype and it all goes with the territory. But no one comes out of this looking particularly impressive. Absolutely not. Frank I doesn't mean, look particularly impressive. No. Tyson Fury looks like he's someone that's trying to make a fight when he's really not trying to do it. And fight the, fans. The feel... only one that probably comes out of it with a little bit of credit is Usyk. But I would also suggest that probably Usyk is also complicit in the fact that he realizes there are better opportunities out for them as well. I mean, Gareth, you're coming in for it from some one one or two people. Like, uh, there's one message, Jim. Please tell Mr. Davis at you stop defending Fury. I'm not defending Fury. I'm not defending anyone. I'm just saying that I'm trying to. This is the reality. Talk about what goes on at this level of, of boxing. When you look at, it's not right because you look at the era of the Four Kings: Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, um, Thomas Hearns and Marvin Hagler, they fought each other nine times in that group. Um, when you look at, um, I was looking at this last night knowing I was coming on, you look at Muhammad Ali fought Frazier three times, mm. he fought Ken Norton three times, he fought Foreman, Foreman and Frazier fought. Yeah, um, yeah. When Holmes came along, Larry Holmes of course came a along a little bit later and that's why Foreman had gone by then, but he Foreman fought everyone. The, the, the principal fights that we haven't had over the last 25 years, if you go back to Lewis and Holyfield and yeah. Bo and Tyson, Lewis and Bo, Mike yeah, Tyson. Yeah. Tyson was way beyond his best when he fought Lennox yeah. Lewis. That happened for a number of reasons. But you look at, there were five fights with Holyfield and Lewis and Bo and Holyfield. And the first holyfield Bo fight, Riddick Bo, was just extraordinary. The 10th round, we'll never forget. It, it'll be etched in memory forever. Those were great fights, but Riddick Bo and Lennox Lewis never fought, yeah. if you recall. That's Riddick the big one. Riddick dropped in the bin, didn't they? Uh, by Rock Newman. Yeah. So, um, so what are you telling us then? The, the, we this, might never see this. It's it history took, repeating itself. Uh, it, it, Recent history. Floyd Mayweather fought everyone he was yeah. meant to fight, but it took six years. It was six years too late when Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao fought. When they fought six years too late, I hasten to add this, it grossed six hundred million dollars but you didn't have this litany that isn't you didn't have this litany of broadcasters like you've got so much now do you not think it's the age of broadcasting and promoter power that's creating this inability to Ab make these fights absolutely uh, when you go back to that obviously the the the, the lewis holyfield Bo tyson era mike tyson era mm. Pay-per-view was there by yeah. then, wasn't it? Yeah. Before that, with the Ali Frazier Correct. era, yeah. Yeah. there wasn't. It was, you know, it, pay-per-view has changed yeah. it all. Right. Pay-per-view influenced um, Manny Pacquiao and, and Floyd Mayweather because they had their own lanes that they were in. Twice, I covered their big fights for over a decade, both of them in Las Vegas at different times and in China and all around the world with Manny Pacquiao. Um, something needs to shift because um, I mentioned those heavyweight fights and the four kings fighting the 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 uh, Duran Leonard yeah. um and and the Hagel and yeah. but um that in this era right now we should not miss out on Fury versus Joyce Fury versus Usyk um Fury versus Joshua Joshua versus Wilder Wilder versus Usyk Usyk versus Joyce. I mean, these are extraordinary. I've just mentioned seven fights there, or six yeah. fights, yeah. that should be made that make them it, it, great it, stars of this generation. Timing, yeah. That's and, the frustration. And, and I agree with you entirely. But and time, I'm not defending anyone no, here. And, and, and some know? of them shouldn't be defended. Um, but time is everything. It's like, I don't believe you'd see Fury Wilder unless Fury was coming back from a long layoff 
and Wilder thought. That was a gamble. A that was a huge gamble. Yeah. Do you think so? Klitschko was a huge gamble. Oh, yeah. No, no, it was a huge gamble for Fury to come back against him. Well, that's that what I'm saying. Time. But we, we, we saw a super fight in Fury versus Wilder, didn't we? But I don't think Wilder would have taken that fight if Fury hadn't been on the back of a two year Maybe layoff not. and come back against a couple no. of people that were yeah. to warm up. It's not more I, I picked yeah. Wilder to win that yeah. fight. Yeah. So, you know, and I was completely. The tragedy wrong. is, I mean, is that the, the other component part that we, you know, obviously we took fights into Zaire and places like that for different reasons, right? But now you've got this enormous Middle Eastern money, which is. In some, in some ways, some would say enhancing the value of the sport. I would say probably not. You what, it's corrupting do, it. what it's doing is it's corrupting outcomes because unless you go and fight for Middle Eastern money, okay. everything else is a harder deal to do. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.